This is a teaching moment. Knowledge is power. <laughs> hey, all mm-hmm. right, all right, all right. Let's talk about the Dark Moon Fair. All right, go yes. ahead. It's all, it's all you, buddy. All right. Now, by pure coincidence, I just so happen to be wearing a plaid today, so let me get my Ben Brode on. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, Matt's adventurers. Today, we are exploring the story of a mysterious realm called the Dark Moon Fair, the place that is filled with cheer. It is a place where the factions, it's neutral. There is no fighting in this place. It is a wonderful place. It's fun. It comes once uh, during the first week of every month in World of Warcraft. But there are some sinister implications that we will touch on. So, to get started, the Dark Moon Fair, um, it initially, back in the early days of World of Warcraft, it was this traveling fair that would go around to different capital cities. So it had that whole traveling carnival vibe. Like, you know, when the when the state fair comes to your area, you know, they, they, they've been traveling around all the different areas and you're, and you're their stop. That's what the Dark Moon Fair used to be. Mm. And it's run by a gnome named Silas Darkmoon, assuming he's a gnome. Uh, we'll touch on that. Um, <laughs> and he has what he calls his his family of freaks. Um, they come from all different races in Azeroth, all walks of life. Just uh, and they, they join the carnival, and they are, have a very close bond, uh, almost to a fanatical extent. There is one. Uh, so th- there's not very much direct lore or story-wise outside of the game itself. But we do have, at one point, there was a little comic that was made uh, that told a story about one of the members of the Dark Moon Bear who was famed for, framed for a crime, for a murder. And the story is about the whole trying to prove her innocence. Oh, no, we can't in time. We got to break her out of jail. Oh, no, we got caught. Oh, oh, look, uh, they they found the real guy after all. It's basically the story. Mm. But the real murderer escapes. And so they do their own brand of vigilante justice where Silas kind of buries him alive in the coffin of the guy he murdered. What? Uh, yeah, so <laughs> there's more to this guy, like the, yeah, like I said, a bit fanatical, and uh, he, he doesn't tolerate violence on his fairgrounds, like I said, it's a place where, you know, no matter what's going on, Alliance and Horde outside, uh, like, you don't fight at the fair, but, never uh, look at yeah, this guy he, the same again. he got really no. metal at least one time, and... It's the implication that this is something that they're perfectly willing to do. Uh, we, like I said, that's the only story that we have. But uh, yeah, so when you guys look at the the friendly, fun gnome who rotates your cards around all goofy like, remember that he buried a guy alive in a coffin with a dead body at one point. <laughs> Dude, how is his ability not like uh, make your opponent's minion dormant, dormant, permanent with a coffin like oh dude what a missed opportunity <laughs> that would be pretty <laughs> awesome but the, it was a comic that was released quite a while ago uh like you know uh, many many years in expansions ago i think even before uh you know back during just the early days uh, in this stage so not a lot of people know about it they would have to have some outside you know recapping of the story or retelling in order to get people to understand what that was but that would be pretty awesome mike i agree (laughs) so let me ask you a quick question so in the artwork in the blizzard official artwork we've got Mm -hmm. the um the the troll that's with him right and I it's was, an ogre, actually. An ogre. I apologize. God, I, I should know better. I, by this. Vastly different beings in Warcraft. An ogre. Maybe I apologize. not in other fairy tales, but in Warcraft. Yeah. Wait, totally different Nate. Uh, did I say? Nice. Did I say troll? I know the trolls are the axe throwers. Come on now. The, yeah, uh, you said troll. Uh, the ogre. The ogre. It's yeah. been a long day. I blame it on work. <laughs> um, the ogre that's with him actually, like, there's a name for him, and he's in. Mm-hmm. Wow, I was surprised they didn't make this set. Is yes. there is there any lore uh, associated? Well, we know his name is Berth, B-U-R-T-H, and he is Silas's bodyguard. 
Um, see, here's the, I feel the same way that there are some significant characters in the fair who didn't make cards. What I'm thinking, and I'll and I'll mention a couple of them. I'm oh. thinking they say there's that mini set coming. Maybe they'll end up as in that set. That's I'm not going be to bet any money on that, but I think there's a pretty good chance that that could be the case. We don't know how big the set's going to be or how many 30, legendaries. 35 cards. We know 35 okay. cards, but that's it. Okay. We've got one one more coming up, actually, that could possibly be in that as well. So, All right. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so, yeah, that, 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 that's Birth, the bodyguard. Yeah, I feel like I've seen this in a movie somewhere. Like, you know, there's a circus. This guy's a ringleader. He's got the bodyguard with him. Knuckles all big and stuff ready to beat <laughs> someone's head in. This is cool. I like this. This good stuff. All right. Yeah. So the next one we have up is the Dark Moon Rabbit. Yes. So what happened around the time of the Cataclysm expansion is the Dark Moon Fair got a revamp and they had just a little bit of story along with it in the announcement that was in the form of uh, an announcement by Silas Dark Moon. Like, come on, come on to the new Dark Moon Fair as now we have a brand new island. It's an enigma wrapped in a mystery. Like that that's literally the word they use to describe it. And he says, you wouldn't believe the deals that we had to make in order to get it or who we made them with. See, that, that's another one of those little vague things that they say that maybe there's something a little creepy, a little sinister going on in the background here. But everything is always very vague, so we don't quite know. Could potentially be old god influence, but this uh, something to remember is that Warcraft... And Hearthstone is not Warcraft canon. Hearthstone is the exploring the possibilities, the what ifs or the what could be's of things in the Warcraft universe. Just how we have uh, in the real world tall tales, myths, legends like, you know, Johnny Appleseed, Paul Bunyan, King Arthur, people like that that are inspired by real events, real places, uh, real historical times, but they don't quite get all the facts quite straight, and there's a lot of speculation. That's the way the Hearthstone is to Warcraft. That's where the relationship the stories are. So, but this, the madness of the Dark Moon Fair is exploring, what if all these vague things are actually true? And what would happen if they were out in the open in full force? So that's where the old gods come in for this set. But so for the Dark Moon Rabbit, this is uh, a world boss that you can find on the Dark Moon Island, hidden away in a little cave. And he looks, he's not a big boss or anything. He looks just like a little rabbit thing uh, that you could easily do with the one kill. Uh, but he is very tough. I believe he is inspired by uh, the a scene from the Monty Python Holy Grail. Oh, uh, oh they, yes. 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 Most. <laughs> That's that's the quote. So I don't know if you saw this, but the flavor text for this card is a quote from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Yeah. So that's I can't. I, I have the most terrible Scottish accent. But if you can, <laughs> if you can read it in your best Scottish accent, that's no ordinary rabbit. That's the most foul, cruel, and bad-tempered rodent you've ever set eyes on. <laughs> yes. So that's one of the you know sinister creatures out. the The fair itself only covers a certain portion of the island. The rest is very. Uh, dark woods that are filled with all sorts of creatures, um, including another creature uh, who is a world boss, the other world boss, who I hope is another one who will get made into a legendary in the mini set, uh, a large white wolf named Moonfang, who, if you beat it, you get a cute little pup as a pet that you can uh, do, that you can have follow around with you. But uh, so, so you have the Dark Moon Island, and the only way that you can get to the Dark Moon Island is through special portals that the fair people will set up when the event is going on. We have no clue where it's located. It doesn't show up on the maps. So we don't even know if it's in the same plane of existence, technically speaking. Um, so when you go through the portal to the Dark Moon Fair, um, you appear... At the uh, top of a, there's a path that winds down through this uh, black forest. It, it, it's always night, and uh, you I have get the map up here too. Is this the portal yes. at the at the bottom by this by this docks here? It looks like. Hmm. Um, let's. See, I can't see what you're showing right now. It looks like there's a long windy path that goes through the fair and then into some woods. 
Like, yes, yes. Uh, the the ending point at the woods is uh, the spot that you spawn in at the fair. Oh, and cool. all right. In order mm. to get down there, if you uh, don't have a mount yourself, you're given the use of a, riding a Dark Moon Strider, which is where that card comes into hey. play. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, and these are a variation of a bird called a plane strider or a tail strider. There actually was a, they've appeared in Hearthstone before, I believe in Goblins vs. Gnomes. There's a mm -hmm. card that no one ever plays called Lost Tail Strider or something <laughs> like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a, a variation of that. They're basically Warcraft's version of ostriches, or emus, cassowaries. Um, Warcraft does this a lot where they'll have uh, a slightly fantasized version of a real animal. Like they don't have crocodiles, they have croc lists, which is one of the basic cards in Hearthstone. So I'm certain you've seen that one quite a bit. I've killed uh, many, many, many of these. Yes, yes, many, exactly. Many, many, many. <laughs> in the Barrens? Is that, is that where they are? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is where, yep, so the Dark Moon Strider. And as you are riding down through the Woods of the Fair, there are several signs, which if you mouse over, they can be a message that I'll read to you now. It says, ahead of you, down the path, a majestic magical flare. Ignore the dark and eerie woods. Ignore the eyes that blink and stare. Fun and games and wondrous sights. Music and fireworks to light up the nights. Do not stop, you're nearly there. Behold, my friend, Dark Moon Fair. <laughs> but you notice that they mention those blinking eyes and the dark and eerie woods. Like, mm -hmm. in their own promotion material, which... Like I, I okay, so I, I only took one PR writing class in college. Still, I think that emphasizing the things that should be ignored, the creepy stuff surrounding you, that's not the greatest PR move in my opinion, but uh, mm. they, they have it anyway. And so, yeah, that's when you take down to the Dark Moon Fair. And so one of the, the key things, the fair is basically full of a lot of mini games uh, that you can play. So first you have to buy tokens that you can use to play the games, which you will then earn tickets. And through those tickets, you can save up to buy various rewards. Some are game type of things, which can help to increase uh, the power or the duration of certain armor pieces. Um, most of it is cosmetic. And one of the most expensive ones uh, is a mount that actually made it into a card, the Dark Moon Dirgeable. Oh, yeah. That, Wait, sorry. Hold it. Can I just yeah. want to let me interrupt for two seconds? Just to sure. Start. Sure. Uh, art appreciation moment that the Dark Moon game token and the new coin, the art is basically um, thank you. the art is identical. It's perfect. Yeah. Right? The new coin is the token. Like, that's awesome. And then and like, I love it so much. And, and like the artwork from the ticket master, like the ticket, it, it matches the ticket in the dark moon prize ticket. It's so great. Mm -hmm. uh, That's really cool. They, That's right on point. It, it's so on point. And, and I understand like we're doing coins, but like it, it was such a, mm -hmm. it was like the golden opportunity, the, to have the game token be the coin. It's yes. So, yeah. yes, I, I was so excited when I saw that. I think, I think that the special, uh, Dark Moon coin is pretty cool too. That one doesn't have any to get at the end of the uh, of the progression path, but this uh, this token right here that is straight out of the game. That's I'm guessing it. this one does turn gold if you have a full golden deck. It does. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the way that all the coins are going. Yeah. Out. Well, I, yeah. I guess I'm gonna have to. Play it all golden deck for fun. I haven't. Well, that, I haven't that shouldn't at. be hard for any of you guys. No, right? no, no. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, this is I, Wednesday I for you. It in all gold deck yet, so I want to huh. want to see how shiny it I is. I don't have no gold decks. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dangerous habit. Those guys. It's a dangerous they, they have, habit. It's they a... have the palatial estate, you know, up near uh, Portland in Canada. I'm just in New Hampshire, bro. Chilling. Ah, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> you saw me, brown chicken standard player. No gold. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. So we have the Dark Moon Dirigible. This is so you get this as a mount, right? Yes, it costs a thousand Dark Moon token, which I should emphasize that 
uh, uh, sorry, Dark Moon <laughs> tickets. You have to save up for many months. This this thing is only available. So all the mini games that we'll talk about are dailies. So you can do them once a day and get a couple tickets from them. There's occasionally a couple other ways that you can get some tickets, uh, mainly by uh, if you have this Dark Moon guidebook and you can randomly get drop things that you can turn in uh, for some extra tickets. One of them to Sage. Um, but... Yeah, so and it's only available for the first week of every month. So you have to save up for quite a bit, a long time, in order to get a thousand tickets. Uh, so this thing is quite the Dark Moon prestige to show off. If you, the if you have this, it shows. Yeah, I am a real devotee of playing the Dark Moon Fair. <laughs> or if you've said this already, when was the first appearance of the Dark Moon Fair? So the Dark Moon Fair itself, it, it, it was initially in the sort of traveling circus style from uh, early on, the very beginning of the game, around the classic era, uh, yeah. before any of the expansions came out. Around the Cataclysm expansion is the time when they got the Dark Moon Island and okay. moved okay. and changed okay. format. That's when all of this stuff, the uh, these a lot of these particular games and the whole token and ticket currency all of that came with the rebranding when they that got that came with, with the island so that's when you could first start collecting to earn yes. well mm -hmm. and i noticed there. that it okay. got an art update right like we had talked about this in the last one that um like with scholomance academy and uh i don't know it looks like this one as well like when i was looking up the art i see some that are older and then i see some that look updated and so was this something um like, did this happen when they got the island, or is this just a, you know, as the game has updated over time? Probably the major thing was when they got the island, but every expansion, or I, I, I'd say almost like every two or three expansions, they get really big graphical overhauls that they put in things, and so they'll uh, reskin, they'll update the uh, appearances of a lot of old stuff. Not everything at once. There's actually a couple instances where, like Calicos, for example, uh, you know, the big blue dragon from uh, Rise of Shadows. In his human form in Warcraft, it still hasn't been updated. So it looks really weird. So he has this really low textured human face standing next to all of these high textured humans. And it looks really <laughs> off. So they don't do everything at once, but they tend to do major overhauls for various different things every uh, two or three expansions or so. So I can't tell you exactly when these particular images got their overhauls, but it, it was likely around one of those times. Now with the fair in general, you see like that eyeball is very prominent on mm -hmm. kind of the banner. Oh uh, God, imagery. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, we're so I, I guess I don't know if we touch on this ba br very briefly, but like we're skipping the old gods for now because the old gods, it's enough for a complete separate episode. Mm -hmm. but, Let me put it this way. The old god story starts before Azeroth existed. We're talking the very beginning of reality in the Warcraft mythology. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot to cover for that. And we would. We'd be here way too late uh, if we started doing that now. Is uh, But is there the influence of the old gods in the Dark Moon Fair? Or well, not so much? I mean, or do it's we... hinted at. There mm. are all these implications. Um, all the, like I said, the, the signs, all the eyes going around. Um, like you feel implicitly that there's something there, but nothing is ever explicitly stated. It's one of the few great mysteries that still exists in Warcraft. And it's one of those things where you feel torn because you like learning the answer to a mystery. Like, you know, when we read mystery stories, we like knowing what happens at the end. But you also want to have some elements of mystery preserved so that it makes the world feel a lot bigger when there's all these things that you don't know. Um, so kind of want there to be confirmation, kind of don't. Uh, it's, 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 it's a bit of a toss-up, and I'm sure most people feel they're somewhere along the line of being torn between the, those two views on it. 
Um, I'll tell you, there, there is one thing that I didn't mention. Uh, there's a lot of ghosts on Dark Moon Island that you can only see when you're dead in the game. Like, if you oh, die well, to that's one of the bosses, you're walking around as a ghost, you can randomly come across other ghosts that will have uh, bits of vague, riddleish dialogue hinting at their past. All people who worked at the fair, people with various backgrounds running away from problems, running away from their old lives. Like, there's this goblin who was trying to escape a debt. There's this one guy whose family tried to kill him when he was a kid. And Silas took him in, and they worked at the fair. But then something happened to them, uh -huh. probably in the dangerous woods outside the fair. Um, there's, uh, there's like, an undead cannibal out there. There's, the, <laughs> there's like, yeah, yeah, her name is, like, Jenny Green. That um, she... Is, she's a food vendor who sells the flavor text indicates that the stuff you're buying is made of human remains oh, or gross. something. Wait, wait, what's yeah. her name again? Um, I, I think it's like uh, Jenny Green Teeth or oh, something. Oh, Green Let Teeth. Me... You cut out last time. Green Teeth. That's hilarious. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'd, I'd have to Google that right now. To no, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. That's fine. But uh, at any rate, so yeah, there, there's a lot there so we don't know how they all met their fates uh but they all had, had they're, they're all haunting the island and everything so that's another one creepy little insinuation type of things uh it says there's probably something a bit sinister on the loose maybe the old gods but again we don't quite know uh here here is uh one really interesting thing. remember i said uh silas dark moon uh if he's a gnome he certainly looks like a gnome but one of the ghosts that you can run into says that he was from the city of Strom, which is this human kingdom that hasn't existed for uh, like uh, 200, 2,000 years, somewhere along. Uh, and now it's possible he could be referring to a kingdom that was built in its place called Strom Guard. Uh, but if he actually just means Strom, that says that, you know, when Silas met him, that would indicate Silas is a lot old peers and maybe not everything. Again, something that mm. we're not entirely certain of, but just to give you an idea of this sense of mystery, this is about the most lore, technically, that we have about the Dark Moon Fair. Just all these hints and allegations and theories and everything, you know? I like it. It's mm. mysterious. Yeah, yes. that's fun. Oh yeah. All right. So, getting Let's back move on to, to the bright and cheeriness of the fair, hmm? <laughs> right? So we're get, getting back to the games. We have the uh, the giant cannon. The cannon. Mm. Yes. So this game is called the Dark Moon Cannon, uh, and the legendary. That Sima Blastenheimer, which is just a really fun name, uh, you know, <laughs> funky little gnome. Um, basically, the way that this game works is that she will shoot you out of a cannon after you pay your token, of course, and <laughs> she'll shoot you in, out of the as a human cannonball or a troll cannonball or elf cannonball, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, into the bay. Uh, you know, off the coast, and there's a target floating in the water, and you have to press a button to try to activate your parachute at the right time that you land straight in the target to get the maximum amount of points in order to win your tickets. So, uh, isn't the flavor text like it's only the third game at the Dark Moon Fair or that's something funny. like that? I think, I think the, that's on the card. Uh, this is a really good example of the in game lore matching the card mechanic. Where she launches you out the cannon, mm -hmm. and then you die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, yeah. Th this is my. Yeah. I, I love. I love even just getting the characters and you know the art and everything. But when they have a mechanic that perfectly mimics what they do, that is mm, that. That's just like a, I get the most excited during reveal season. When I see a legendary and their mechanics, it's like, oh, I know they because they, they, they do that thing in the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's just so much yeah, fun. That's so I, cool. I believe there's an achievement for Hunter Tied with this uh, to do a certain amount of damage by blasting minions at your opponent. <laughs> I believe it. Oh, I think huh. they have one for each of the uh, legends. 
Yeah, oh, yeah that was, hey, she's kind of she's kind of short. Is she uh, Silas's sister? Uh, no, she, well, she's a gnome. Um, not all gnomes are related, obviously, any more than all humans are related, except unless you want to go common ancestry. Although technically gnomes are actually descended from robots that got turned uh, into flesh by old gods. Again, story for another thing. So, okay. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, gnomes have an interesting backstory. I'm blown. And, <laughs> but hmm. uh, yeah, so they're the same race, uh, but that's about it. There's no lore that says they're related in any closer way. All right. Okay, so next up, we've got another game, the Ring Toss. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is a very frustrating one, at least when I try to play it. So you see the, the cute little turtle that is on the card. Um, basically, you need to uh, toss a ring onto him, but he keeps moving around randomly. Um, he has a name, by the way. It's uh, Dabinko. And <laughs> yes. Yes, the turtle is named Dabinko. <laughs> <laughs> and oh. he and you have to toss the rings around and around. <laughs> and Wait, does, uh, he, does he teleport or does he like, like no walk he just he, he he'll like he'll walk slowly and like stay still for a little bit and then just when you're uh tossing it like you, you click to toss it and then just before it gets there he'll suddenly turn around and walk in another direction and it's Really, you, you have to like try to get down his pattern and be really good with your timing and stuff to anticipate where he's going to be so you can throw the ring when he's there so it lands on him when he gets there at the same time. Oh, it's, it's like surprisingly difficult in a game. <laughs> yeah, he's got to shoot where they're going to be. It's like Call of Duty, we there. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah, except with rings. I, I'm not very good at ring toss in real life either, so... <laughs> Um, but yes, yeah, so that's that that's that one right there. And then uh, we also have the shooting gallery, which is where Rinling's rifle comes in. Um, so this card is an old god corrupted version of the rifle. Um, mm. So that's not the way it appears in game. But it is this shooting gallery uh, run by a, a sand troll named Rinling, thus Rinling's rifle. And uh, it's it's a pellet gun, so if you were to actually try to do any damage with it in game, it would do absolutely nothing. Um, <laughs> but so it's basically, you know, you have some uh, targets, and you have the ones, and you want to shoot the one that lights up when it lights up. Uh, one of the easier mini games, in my opinion. And you know, you get so many points, and then you get your tickets if you are able to get those points. Is that one good to farm. Well, again, they're dailies; so you can only do them day so you can't really farm it any more than you could farm any of the others well it must take if you forever could, to i would like... recommend it but so how do you get good at the turtle if you can only do it once a day for a week a month like well, no. you get you you can only complete the quest once oh. a day you can oh. keep spending tokens I was gonna to say, get is there... unlimited tries on it like it's once, a once you get there? it you only get the reward one day. <laughs> Rather like a real carnival. You know, we'll let you spend a bunch of money on this to get the prizes. But you, you only get the prize the once. Yes. <laughs> the rifle here looks, uh, it actually also, if you see it on the screen, it looks like the same rifle they use in the screen where, uh, I mean, it just, it's just like, like a musket or something. Yeah. Obviously, without the eye and teeth and everything. It's been game, corrupted but... by the old gods. Yes. It needs a muzzle on its muzzle, I believe, the flavor says. <laughs> That's pretty good. You count as a corrupted card. It's already corrupted. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right. And then we've got the Tonk. Yes. So, Warcraft is interesting in its blend of what level of technology they have. Um, in this fantasy setting, because gnomes, goblins, and dwarves all have highly mechanical uh, aspects in their cultures uh, that they're good at tinkering, making these things. These talks are actually of dwarven design, and they are essentially remote control cars that shoot stuff. I, I, it's honestly more advanced in this fantasy setting than 
most toys that I ever saw as a kid. Um, <laughs> but uh, basically the way that this works is that there's this little town uh, that you drive around and you want to control your Tonk to be able to shoot as many targets as possible while there's these little uh, tiny zeppelins that are floating above it trying to shoot it down. <laughs> and it's, again, one of those, you know, try to get as many points as possible uh, within the time limit type of games. And so that's the the minefield card is kind of representing it, driving around, trying to avoid all that stuff on the track. Oh, okay. it's, it's really interesting. A couple things here that I think are neat. Um is that, uh, you know, when you look at the card, like it looks like a full size tank, but like in the game, it's a toy basically, right? Yes. Um, which is <laughs> like a little just... remote control car. But, but then, f- like, flavor wise, it, it makes sense that it launches these little mini bombs. Cause I had wondered it, it, when it, the death rattle is, uh, fire four missiles at random that do two damage each. So it's like these little bombs with these little mm-hmm. damage, like, uh, but it makes sense because they're toys, right? It's so cute. Yes. I mean, it's really pretty funny. Yeah. And, and toys can do damage. I mean, like, I don't know if any of you have ever been shot with a uh, Nerf arrow before on uh, <laughs> when a kid did a full on their Nerf bow and shot at you. But uh, those can leave an impact. So Toys can do damage. This is entirely <laughs> realistic. Uh, so, yeah, then after this, moving on, we, we have... The Wackanole Hammer, uh, which is another one of the mini games. It's obviously like whack a mole, um, but there's these uh, large barrels that you have to go around, and it's one of those things where you want to. It's it's a timed game, so you're rewarded for doing things quickly. But there's a catch because there's three different gnolls that uh, can pop out of the barrels. And they're like stuffed animals on springs, of course, not actual living creatures that you're whacking, um, which is a, which you can see in the artwork. of the. And they actually appear down on the Dark Moon board in the lower right hand corner. You can click on one of those and it bounces around the spring in the barrel or whatever. Don't know if you've mm. noticed that, but mm. that's one of the things nope. there. And... Um, so there's the basic uh, knoll that can pop up uh, that will give you the default amount of points. There's a large hogger, which you guys know the hogger card and everything. He's a knoll. Um, we'll talk about knolls in a bit more in a minute. Um, and if you hit that one quickly before he goes down, then he's worth a lot more points. But then they also have these little stuffed baby knolls that pop up in like little bonnets and pacifiers and stuff. And if you hit those... Well, that was bad, and you lose points. Um, so Ooh. it's it's the challenge of being able to have the reflexes of getting it quickly before it goes down, but not so quickly that you don't stop to notice, oh, that's one I'm not supposed to hit, because you don't hit the babies for crying out no. loud, you know? <laughs> nah, because Silas will come after you, I heard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like yes. this. The hammer also is sh- like straight out of the game. It's great yeah uh the artwork here is spot on so Mm -hmm. the other two games uh the next two games that we have i didn't see cards for so we had yeah uh, the firebird challenge and uh although there's kind of uh like sparkles in the sky and stuff and i wonder yeah a lot of the mage cards like the grand finale the fire kind of theme but there's nothing particularly about the game itself yeah, we yeah. see some of those kind of fireworks and rings of rings of fire in the sky and stuff, mm-hmm. and then the dark moon races as well. Although we have the uh, the striders, and so maybe that's uh, thematic, you know. Right, and again, things I'm hoping maybe they a bit more into the mini set. Uh, these wouldn't even have to be legendaries; they could be commons uh, that would just touch on things a bit. But I'm really hoping that we do get a bit more of the complete flavor that they're going to bring on in that stuff. And so then those are all of the mini games and the tickets to get the prizes and stuff. But there's other features at the fair. Some things are just uh, fun to look at. Um, others are things. So for the roller coaster, 
and the carousel. Mm -hmm. um, these are actually things that uh, you can get like a little book of ride tickets. And if you hop on, it'll give you a buff that increases your experience and reputation. So basically, uh, while you have it, after you rode on one of these rides, uh, basically you get more rewards for doing the same stuff. Um, kind of like the XP bonuses in the <laughs> battle path, honestly. And I love this. When you, after you do it, the buff is called, and I kid you not, Wee! That's amazing. It's oh, like, that's funny. I was having so I much fun it. on the carousel that I uh, get more experience out of every pig that I kill or oh, whatever. Gosh, that's know? funny. So yeah, I have I here the it. carousel up. And so we've got Revolve and the carousel Griffin. Mm -hmm. Um Oh my gosh, I did not get the pun on Revolve till this exact second. What you did it? No, until like I didn't realize. I never looked at the character. Devolve. Devolve. Revolve. Yeah, yeah. Now that I know it's carousel tied in, like I didn't even think <laughs> about that. Like I didn't. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the flavor is pretty is pretty spot on. Yeah. Uh obviously okay. that's an old guy. Like this is cool. Carousel, but and then, and then the, yeah. uh, the roller coaster here, there's a couple cards as well. Uh, mm -hmm. The Cascading Disaster <laughs> and, yes. de and Derailed Coaster. Do we... Um uh does the <laughs> does the roller coaster ever get derailed i would hope not but. not to my knowledge in the game though <laughs> that i i have seen a lot of jokes that you guys remember safety inspector card um there are a lot of jokes that i see at least the community make about you know oh watch out you know if this is goblin made then chances are that you can't trust it or whatever <laughs> but uh, goblins put getting something built quickly ahead of getting it built properly that's kind of their thing um oh. so it would yeah so but as far as game wise it never goes off story wise i think it would be very likely that it wouldn't like this um uh, though no official lore exists on whether it does or not i will say that this uh the karis or the uh roller coaster is probably the most iconic part of the fair uh which is interesting I because it's actually iconic. new to the fair they ah i see what you're doing there uh, yeah <laughs> I, I didn't <laughs> it was actually only added like a year ago to the fair oh so. interesting yeah, yeah, they they always add, you know, they have their big patches, their big content release. They like to add, sometimes just add small things in between uh, or as a part of it alongside. So once they're like, yeah, so we're having the large patch and you're going to go to this undersea place and this place with a whole bunch of robot gnomes and uh, and we're having a roller coaster, the Dark Moon Fair, blah, 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 blah. That was like part of a BlizzCon announcement at one point. <laughs> so... Yeah, right. so that, nice, nice. All right, playing with the coaster on the game board, it's, it's fun. It <laughs> yeah, really fun. I I like this a lot better than some of the previous game boards that we've gotten, like more than the Ashes of Outland, for example. This mm -hmm. just feels more alive and interactive a game board than some of the other mm -hmm. ones that we've had there, before. Like a big like Ungoro Crater style effect that like happens on this game board. The, the roller coaster will, I found. the coaster itself will travel around the various parts of the yeah, game board but, though, which, which is, again, yeah. makes it feel alive. Like I was saying, yeah, like it pops out of the bottom, right? I know that. Yeah. By the yeah, way, this, but... this cascading disaster card, uh, I've had it played against me over the past week and it's better mm -hmm. than I anticipated. I haven't it, seen it yet. <laughs> it's, it's a, it's plus. A plus. Uh, I believe it. I don't. I think we probably rated it fairly low. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Edit the, the sheets. Board. Edit the sheets. <laughs> right. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> um. But but yeah. Anyways, the uh, yeah losing three minions for four mana was really tilting. <laughs> oh man. But uh, apparently uh, they they did not survive the derailed roller coaster. <laughs> Oh, All right, no. so we have the petting zoo here. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there's a number of different creatures uh, that we see. And I was looking at it earlier because I had thought we had chatted right before the show. And I was thinking that the, uh, the uh, what is it, the 
trampling rhino may have been one but it turns out it was just old graphics and it's actually some kind of a uh, lizard instead <laughs> yeah it's called the thunder lizard um yeah that the, the old graphics do sometimes make things look a bit too similar to each other but uh yeah so this is basically it's a menagerie bazaar and they spell it uh, they don't spell it bizarre as in like the normal where you go and buy something. They spell it bizarre as in strange uh, with the B I Z Z. And uh, it's basically the whole come and see all the exotic creatures from all over Azeroth type of thing. Uh, mm. Like, you know, re real exotic zoo type of stuff. And they have a little petting zoo area, which is where the card gets its name from. And it's also where the Don't Feed the Animals card is set. Uh, with the, Hunter really went, because Hunter is all about beasts and everything, so it made sense that they would really draw on the uh, menagerie flavor for a lot of their stuff. As well as the projectiles from the cannon and the gun. Yeah, a lot of that stuff just lent itself to the Hunter flavor really well. Yeah, no, that's really interesting. And I think Men we saw menagerie as kind of a theme for this set um, as far as... Uh you know just like a new archetype for the warrior yeah class. And i was going to ask you about ringmaster watley that's a that's a new mm. creation right yes he does not have any particular look although i would love to see that character get a mod appear in the game and That'd it's not cool. unheard of for them to take hearthstone characters and add them to wow they did well, it they did with, it with uh, sir finley and the league of explorers uh so I'd love to see him get added into the Darkman Fair, because why not? He's pretty cool looking. Yeah. Okay, the next one up that we have is the uh, the Deathmatch uh, yes. Pavilion. Yeah, so this is what the Shaman class is drawing a lot of its theme from. So this is the game. It's sort of. Basically, it's an arena. Because like I said, there's no fighting at the Dark Moon Fair. Yeah. Except in the Deathmatch Pavilion, where it's basically a gladiatory arena where you can go and have a free for all PvP stuff if you want to. Um, mm -hmm. On certain, uh, around midnight or so, there will be a chest that appears that you can fight over um, and will get you some rewards if you're the one who comes out on top and no one kills you before you can actually open it. <laughs> and. <laughs> okay. Yeah, actually, it, it's rather similar to, uh, if you remember the arena treasure chest from Rastakhan's Rumble. In the Gurubashi arena, there's something very similar where, okay, at certain times of the day, a treasure chest appears. And the thing is, when you click on it, it is like a, an action bar to complete the... Uh, action of opening it and that can be interrupted if someone hits you so the thing is that you need to make sure uh, in both of these things that you take down the other people so that there's no one around to hit you to interrupt you trying to open the chest to get the prize mm. and so they uh they really went leaned into like, this make sure the other wrestlers are on the floor before you climb the ladder kind of yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the flavor text says worth it for the stuffed toy at the end <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then the uh then the legendary that I'm not showing right here uh the uh the dwarf she's an original character but she's uh the, they they found a way to uh, lean in they're making her they're like oh she's one of the champions of the deathmatch arena uh, with oh. her lightning hammer abilities, uh, being a wild hammer dwarf, because they, they're a type of dwarf that has uh, shamanistic abilities. A lot of the time, they they, they tend to kind of have the Thor type of thing with lightning and hammer. Oh, uh, that's cool! I didn't know that. Yeah, so that's okay. uh, so in the that that's kind of how they're linking it with the shaman flavor in general for this set. Hmm. Okay. Like to see that? Okay. Hey, real right. quick, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I play for. It. I played for six years. Skullamance was a little, maybe a little more, but this one, this one is Skullamance. I love the the artwork, but also the lore episodes make me say this. But it's cool to see and hear like what the wild WoW story is, and to see like the artwork in the card. Like, yeah, this is this is like a total different experience than playing Hearthstone, dude. So I'm mm -hmm. loving this. Thank you, thank you, Nate. Thank you, Hydra. This is cool. Yeah, this yeah. is a blast. I love it. So I love it. it. And something that they, uh, the Harson devs talked about is when they 
can just use some of the art in the cards to tell even just like mini stories that are a part of it. Like how, you know, there's this character, you have their minion, but you see them also doing an action in the spell and just kind of shows a little story about them, you know, uh, doing something in this yeah. setting. And I really like that aspect of the Hearthstone as well. Yeah, and I think mm-hmm. they just started that with Skolomance where, and I, I saw the dev saying that as well, where with the legendary cards, they were trying to do other cards that show that character in them doing something. Yeah. We saw that in Skolomance as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In, this, cool. in this set also, and I think that's that's been pretty fun. Yeah, keep doing that. Agreed. I'm really interested in the next one because I think that this is a, a more of a, a major character here. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, so we have Sage. Seer of Dark Moon. So Sage is a null here. Um, so gnolls are basically anthropomorphic hyenas. They tend to not be the brightest. Um, Hogger is the most famous one, the leader of the called the Riverpaw tribe. Their point of origin is unknown, though generally in Warcraft. Most animal type races are descended from some sort of powerful animal nature god or uh, created by them in some fashion, but we don't really know anything about the created by animals. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you said it. <laughs> that was good, Mike. You, I like <laughs> you got to go take a shot. That's the rule on the show. If you say created by, take a shot. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I don't have any booze in that. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so they are uh, actually one of the low-level races that if they end up fighting, they are big problems with uh, uh, against Stormwind. Um, but Sage is unique, and he is pretty much the only Null who is style to you. And so he has this little fortune-telling tent, uh, kind of in a bit of a back corner in the fair. And if you go to him, there is this uh, fun little thing where... Uh, he'll he'll do this completely for free. You don't have to pay any tokens or anything. Um, where he'll ask you some questions and you can choose some dialogue. Um, and then depending on how you answered it, you'll get a unique buff um, that for a little while that increases one stat or another. And so it's like, mm, I can see you your future and based off of the way you answer my questions this is who you are and that affects it and so that's what's affecting his uh, flavor right here where he's all about you know uncovering the secrets of you know what something really is so for every secret that you trigger he's getting more cards that's clever i like that that's mm. a good uh, good ability there mm-hmm. uncovering the secrets so they did great on the artwork for this including the red crystal book. yeah so mm-hmm. I Big. thought that was an apple. <laughs> <laughs> In the World of Warcraft no. picture, I thought that was an apple. <laughs> oh no, no, that that Sage's crystal ball, right? There. Oh, what, man. what's a carnival so fortune goofy. teller without one? <laughs> well, I was looking. No, nah, I was looking behind him. I thought that blue orb with the crystal, you know, with the mist. I thought that was something, but never mind. Ah, <laughs> I see. Yeah, no, that's just the lighting behind him because they yeah, they love- uh, they made him look. Uh, tint in this uh, art then mm. he tends to appear in game with the lighting got you very cool okay well what would be a fair with no live music right yeah uh, oh is it time yeah <laughs> toron chieftain uh which has been a card before uh, which mm-hmm, i, I Maybe you guys can tell me this. Exactly how did you originally get that card? Because now it's Hall of Fame, Druid. Yep. It's a BlizzCon thing. Oh, okay. Just why they made it where it wasn't, you know, a super powerful ability. But, okay, that, that makes sense. But, yeah, I believe it was only Golden was BlizzCon, and you could just craft the, the okay. regular one. As, as far as I remember. Yeah, it's- yeah, yeah. So Elite... The golden version of Elite Torn Chieftain can only be obtained as a promotion from purchasing uh, either the ticket or the virtual ticket for BlizzCon 2013. A little late for that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can get one. You can get one uh, on eBay for like seven hundred dollars. <laughs> My man said eBay. Yo, no, you did not stop it. Yes, no, I'm not the joking. I'm test of your blingtron whaleyness. I it's and the golden one is uncraftable. 
cannot be crafted, cannot be disenchanted. Uh. The uh, regular version of Elite Torn Chieftain can only be obtained through crafting. Mm. And it's not a good card. I am guilty, but it has very, very awesome entrance animation. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) I can't even remember what all its cards, because it it gives you like a random card. None of them are Mm -hmm. are good. Yes. Uh, No, they're they're not good, but they certainly rock. (laughs) (laughs) And so, hey, at least now we have a version of the character regular. We don't have on an old ticket to get um in golden i so, love that he's uh he's playing the drums with this giant hammer yes that's yeah. chief thunderskins the drummer of the band um mm-hmm. but often serves as the mascot because he has a tauron and it's called the elite tauron chieftain so here's the thing elite tauron chieftain is a real band made of blizzard employees and they have a virtual version of themselves in the Dark Moon Fair. Stop and it. they even made it as a hero in Heroes of the Storm. Elite Tour on Chief. Like he, he had true. moves like Power Slide and Mosh Pit mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So the cards that you get that you were talking about from that original card, uh, there's three the Rogues Do It, uh, Power of the Horde, and I Am Murloc. Those are the names of songs they've written. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's good flavor. Mm-hmm. I I do have a question it's though. Your flavor card. That that one. Uh, so the stage here, it looks like the name. It looks like L O O E T C. Is that something different, or it looks like a lightning bolt? I don't know. Do you see what I'm talking? Is that about? a nine? Hmm. I don't know. Are, Are you stage, talking about yeah. the original one or the new? Well, the one at the Dark Moon Fair has got them on a stage, and there's like a banner with the band name on it, and it doesn't say ETC. It looks like is it L ninety? Is it? Oh, is it, it's level ninety? That's got to be L ninety ETC. Level ninety ETC. Right. Oh, okay. That's what it is. That's. What I don't it play. Is. I'm just guessing. I don't no, know. no, 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 All no. Right. You've got to be right because I know with some of these expansions, my brother used to play a lot, and I remember some of the expansions like. If you you know came in with this expansion, it would level your character up, right? To uh, mm-hmm. oh. so this is level ninety etc. That's pretty funny, actually. Yeah. God, it's like a bragging. A, I'm so a, elite, look at my level type of thing. You know? What a, what a <laughs> silly! That's an inside joke for sure. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the members of the band, it looks like an orc and a troll and the uh, the tauren and what is that? A human or an elf in the middle and a dwarf maybe. So it's a whole oh, yeah. different group of uh, of characters here. Yeah, each of them representing a, the actual Blizzard employee that uh, makes the band. That's pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of which, there is an OTK deck with ETC. I don't know how good it is, uh, but it exists. And so uh, we'll have to try that at some point. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see the combos for this. But Warrior is pretty good with Rush. It's one of the ones that it's the mechanic is a bit stronger in that class. So mm-hmm. I, I'm looking forward. I don't have this card myself, but I'm looking forward to seeing uh, the combos that people can make with it. The, uh, yeah, the it's, it's, uh, like the, it's like the whole power sliding thing in stage. The entrance, the, uh, the entrance animation on this one as well is super cool. Is it? Oh, does, yeah. it does the power slide in? Uh, it, it, it does it, something. I don't recall, but it was, I saw it once and I was like, oh, whoa. That's- yeah. It's like a lot of like energy, adrenaline. It shows the letters ETC. It's like, it's one of the best like animations I've seen in this game. I was like, damn for a one, four. <laughs> holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so, and then one other thing that you can collect in the, uh, in the game are these dark moon cards, right? Yes. So how do these how do these work? Like the artwork on the cards is super cool, but I don't understand. So I I looked him up: Berserker, Death, Greatness, Illusion, the Blue Dragon, Crusade, uh, Heroism, Madness, Maelstrom, Twisting Nether, Vengeance, and Wrath are the different Dark Moon cards. But like, what are the cards? Yeah. So the cards are things that you can collect if you have the inscription profession which basically means you, you can make them uh but some of them can only be gotten off of 
uh, powerful boss enemies around the world, like in various raids or world bosses or what have you. And the idea is that you eventually work to collect them all. And when you do, they can be turned in at the Dark Moon Fair uh, and you get a special trinket uh, which gives you special abilities that is that deck. So it's like these are powerful magical cards of unknown origin, maybe old gods. And uh, actually, one of the little hints is that if you talk to the uh, Professor Thaddeus Paleo guy, who is the one who turned the cards into, he says, like, oh, have you heard of these cards? If you find any, the master, oh, I mean, I would be very interested. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. oh. uh, <laughs> so, yes, they, so these are just two of the possible deck trinkets they can get in the deck of chaos and the deck of lunacy oh. and I, say, I love the art on these things and i love their crazy effects i also just love the meta of there being a card in the card game of hearthstone that is a deck of cards that influences your actual deck of cards. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Well, and if you look at the artwork, number one, right? Deck of Lunacy, it's Sage is the one holding the cards, right? I yeah. Mean, that's that's got to be mm -hmm. Sage. He kind of pulls showing it up like a tarot card in a sense. It's like, oh, I think you're... Uh, yeah, <laughs> and then the artwork on the it. madness of the uh, for deck of lunacy is the madness card, mm -hmm. uh, like it's the art straight from that, which is really yes. cool. Uh, yeah, the flavor is like spot on. I I I'm just so impressed. Like, and it makes me sad uh, that like so many people don't know about this stuff, right? Like, that's why I'm here. Yeah. This is awesome. That blue dragon card, that's Malagos, right? I, that's my boy, Malagos. Yeah. Blue dragon. It must be. be. No, yeah. And, and for death, it's uh, Deathwing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's definitely Deathwing. I can see the big metal jaw. Um, so, Which one of these cards is Chaos? Am I blind? Uh, let me move the artwork here real quick. Uh, I Let's see. I don't see no there I don't see one for chaos. I don't I don't know. think okay. it, you don't have that one up on the screen right now. I didn't see okay, I this were, these were all the ones that I could find in the wiki. So I don't know. I mean it's possible that I missed something but there, there is the chaos deck. Um oh, but interesting. There, there were different ones that were added on different expansions and I think not all mm. of them have the same art uh okay. in, in that style. You know, there were ones made for higher level Mm -hmm. So you're probably looking at some of the original ones. I think the Chaos one came along a little bit later and didn't necessarily get a picture. I don't. Oh, it's, it's possible. Cool. It's still cool to see this stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, well, and that, now we know that if it did have a picture, this is what it would look like. <laughs> this also shows what Nate was talking about. Sage is a minion, legendary, and then this is a spell that shows the minion in the mm, uh, card. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And in, in, in the same class, legendary too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Not the same deck, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what well, don't you want all your secrets turned into cards that cost uh, you know a bit higher? <laughs> uh, That's funny. Nah. <laughs> Ice block is now Blizzard, but anyway. Hey, there you go. There you go. <laughs> uh have has has anyone played these yet i've i've played deck of chaos uh my experience with it, i've only played it once or twice i feel like it's slow but it, it's pretty powerful i mean playing a three mana nine nine void daddy is pretty dope but it, it but it feels kind of slow to me i don't think that unfortunately it's probably as good as we hyped it up to be uh deck of lunacy i have not played it all have you guys mike i saw you yeah i played it um one time it was very beneficial for me and the other time it wasn't so it's, to <laughs> it, 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 it's to total you're at a 50 card. 50 right now yeah if you're looking to hang out and have some fun with the guys play it if, if you're trying to get like you know your friend quest in sure but don't play it on ladder for ranks like <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah all right so then, yeah, so that's that's about all of the uh, basic things we have for uh, connections with the Dark Moon Fair. Um, like I said, 
I'm looking forward to seeing what they come out with in the mini set. But there's not quite as many cards to feature necessarily for this because the set is flavor-wise split in two. You have uh, more old god leany things, you have more fair type things, and of course, there's lots of fair type things that they just created for the Hearthstone that don't appear in the game. But these are pretty much all of the relevant ones that do. That being said, this is one of those things where I love when Hearthstone expands on the flavor of something because technically, story-wise, mm -hmm. things are always much larger than they are in the game. You know, like in World of Warcraft, you have the huge capital city that is really about the size of a real life city block or something story-wise it's much bigger than that but they're limited to what they can do in the game so what yeah. i really like in hearthstone with cards like this like we have you know like the the game master and you know like the the knife salesman or all those different things that you can imagine okay they might not actually be in the game but you can imagine that they are and it makes the whole thing seem bigger in that sense yeah, that's another thing yeah. i just love about hearthstone expanding like this um but then we also have some cards about that are some of the legendaries in this set that don't fit into either of those camps they're not super old gaudy and they're not super dark moon fair um some of them but not necessarily certain what they're doing but <laughs> they're characters that it's great to have in um, uh, yeah so first of all i've got so, grand so. grand empress shek zara this is the rogue legendary Right. So this is one that actually does have Old God connection, um, because she is the empress of an insectoid race called the Mantid, obviously inspired by a praying mantis by their design. Uh, there's lots of different insect-type races that serve the Old Gods, and they all look like different kinds of bugs. Uh, but essentially, her thing is that she is the... Empress, her, she was just an egg when uh, you first encounter her in the game during a raid where you have to uh, kill the previous Empress, who has essentially been possessed and is causing a lot of problems. That's for the Old Gods uh, episode, basically. But essentially is that um, recently in the Battle for Azeroth expansion, she uh, pledged her loyalty to Nazoth as the new Empress. And you have to uh, kill her as a world boss and fight a lot of her uh, minions as she's sending these swarms of, you know, giant, uh, you know, human-sized flying insects. And, and they tend to use, they, they use amber a lot. So, like, they'll trap you in amber, either the liquid or freezing you in a block of it. Uh, and <laughs> it's one of those things that if you think it was actually happening in real life, absolutely terrifying like like horror movie type stuff that they actually looked realistic you know giant praying mantises coming to get you but uh, <laughs> that's essentially what she is right there wow that's funny well no that makes sense that you see the little insects in the background of her card and the eyeball in the background which indicates the old god influence that's actually pretty mm -hmm. uh mm. Some just... all right uh next up we we've got uh Ten Wu of the Red Smoke. Yeah, so this is a character um, without much lore personalized in uh, in Warcraft. He is a character who is uh, he's called a Shadow Pan. Basically, uh, in Pandaria, which I really want there to be a Pandaria Hearthstone expansion because there's just so much amazing stuff there. Um, but he's he's what's called a shadow pan. They're basically panda panda ninjas. Um, mm -hmm. they're the like like rogue. Uh, they they have all the cell stuff. Honestly, they they would fit amazing. Oh, actually, there is there's that shadow pan card from the grand tournaments as the the combo ability. Mm -hmm. Um, and so they are like masters of stealth, and they help to fight the mantid and other threats to the pandaren. And, uh, yeah, they, they have, like, this cool monastery that they train in way up in the mountains. And they're, like, they're, most Pandaren are very laid back and fun-living. Uh, the Shadow Pan tend to be a bit more the 
I wouldn't say emo, but they're the very serious ones about, you know, we have to take <laughs> yeah. threats seriously and no nonsense and that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Tenure of the Red Smoke mm -hmm. is an anomaly among the Shadow Pan and the Pandaren. Uh, his few dialogue things, he's rather full of himself. He's like, I'm so handsome. I'm so talented. You're interested <laughs> in me, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah like that that like if you keep clicking on him he'll say that sort of thing um so like he's uh, as a character he's pretty much just uh someone who's there you might see him in the background a few times you might have a quest or two associated with him not a major lore character but really cool to see uh individuals like this still get a little focus on them in the game when you and they have hearthstone cards and you remember them when you might have forgotten. Yeah. What do you think about a Mists of uh, Pandaria uh, expansion? That'd be pretty fun. Yeah. Well, I think it's one of those cases where you'd want to focus in on a specific region. Because remember for the Ashes of Outland, that was just all over the place covering an entire... Mm -hmm. um, and it's like the different classes were focusing on different regions... So it was very, just a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and they used up all of Outlands in that. I, I understand why they did it, but I think for Pandaria, you wouldn't want to use up all of Pandaria. You just want to focus on the richness of one or two particular zones. I, see. I mean, how many times have we gone to Northren? They have the Grand Tournament, the Descent of Dragons, the Frozen Throne. Uh, all of those take place on the same continent, but they're in very different well, locations that. on that continent. Okay. Oh, wow, that's really interesting. Well, I, I just like I love the flavor for for the rogue class of the Shadow Pan. Like, yes, that would be super cool. Uh, just mm -hmm. saying, they would make a great uh, additional rogue skin. Uh, just saying, <laughs> mm -hmm. I would like that a lot. <laughs> All right, all right, let's move on. So we have the Paladin Legendary of uh, Euro. Yep. Okay, so this one is going to get slightly complicated. That's a huge lollipop. <laughs> wow, that's a gigantic grape lollipop, my goodness. <laughs> sorry, sorry, my, my bad. Just came back from, 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 from the dentist. Paladins have very large crystal hammer. She's at the fair, right? <laughs> That's funny. Man. Oh man, that was the prize. One, one a big <laughs> <Yeah>. lollipop. <laughs> that takes you for that that you never finish and end up just throwing away most of it. <laughs> I believe with candy canes most years, I can never finish a candy cane. I, I tend up, I tend to accidentally whittle it down to a little point and just stab my mouth, and that's it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that came out of nowhere. But at any rate. Uh, <laughs> So Yurl is actually from an alternate reality because there was this expansion called Warlords of Draenor, which got really complicated, where basically Garrosh Hellscream, you know, the, the warrior here, he used a bronze dragon to go back in time and created an alternate timeline on his world where it became Outland, uh, back before everything got corrupted. And he decided to invade our reality through the Dark Portal. And it's one of those things that it's a time travel thing you don't want to think too hard about. Otherwise, you get a headache. But basically, the Yurl is from an alternate reality where we go and uh, you meet her and she's very, uh, she's just a naive little uh, uh, priestess who has been captured. She's very young and she has, you know, she eventually grows in confidence, power, and ends up becoming her people as a strong paladin and exarch, uh, which is a special rank that Dren and I have in their societies. And then, then we, the expansion ends and we go back to Azeroth, and none of that really comes into play with the story again. Because uh, she, she's not in our world. She's back there. But there was, was there is this one thing where, uh, briefly, in order to recruit um, some orcs from that time period, uh, in order to come join the Horde, there uh, ended up going 
back to the world, but jumping many years into the future somehow. And uh, she kind of went a little fanatical and crazy potentially where she's kind of going around like a uh, grand inquisition style, uh, convert or die type of stuff. And I don't necessarily like what they decide to do with her character off screen. Maybe they'll revisit it in the and fix things up. Maybe they won't. I don't know. But uh, that's basically who this character is. Nothing to do with the Dark Moon Fair. Where do, where do we do like even with this reality? But... In game now, can you still find her? Well, not in the current story. If, no. if you play through that expansion's content, yeah. you can be mm -hmm. with her and everything. You can see but her. She's she she no longer exists in the game currently. She's in an entirely separate timeline in than the main game story. Like I said, I like that. yeah. Huh. And I can appreciate the main it. thing that I can say is why they put her in here is where else would they really find they, there's not really an expansion that they could fit her in properly necessarily because i don't see why they would set one in the alternate timeline especially since it wasn't a very popular expansion they they had a bit of a content drought a lot it's kind of has a bit of an infamous reputation among wow players but mm -hmm. uh i think that it's similar to the theme that paladin had in whispers of the old gods where it's like oh see the old gods are rising powerful you know like the stand against darkness and all those types mm -hmm. of cards mm -hmm. so i think for these two paladin legendaries and we'll get into the next one um that is basically like let's pick two of the strongest uh warriors <laughs> of the fight combat oh, God. sorry chat Ch yes. Say it. Yeah. <laughs> she's Say playing it. Uh -huh. that game at the fair where you swing the giant hammer to hit the bell <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> let's go with that I don't know if there's flavor text that says anything related to that, but yeah, let's say she's here to win Yo. prizes and kick old gods, and she's already won all the prizes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's That's go Yo, with Goliath. That. Yo, Goliath. Um, so, like Memnarch said, she exists, but not really. She's like my ex girlfriend. So, here's the thing <laughs> I watch, I watch, uh, I watch The Flash, and uh, often, very often, the flash will time jump. So when you explain the time jump to me, it doesn't feel that strange. I totally understand what you're saying. Yes, I watch uh, it too. It's we, really good. We, we, yeah. Oh, so you guys get it. We, uh, we operate here. She exists here. Garage sidestep. Pull her here. I get it. I totally get it, dude. Okay, good. It, good. It, it, if you, it's like you said, it makes sense if you don't think about it. So let's do it. Yes. By the way, the flavor text says there can be no neutrality in the fight against darkness. Which makes sense with her uh, battle cry. Your deck can have no neutral cards. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, she actually says yeah. that as her. As that's her the rap. that's the flavor text. Oh right, yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought yeah. you were saying that her voice line. She goes on. Your deck can have. <laughs> <laughs> the most meta voice line I'd heard on a card, but yeah. No, her voice uh, line is like Nate said, hammer swing, ding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ding. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's who Euro is. Okay, so next up is uh, Lothraxian. Yeah, so he is a really interesting character. So he is, as you can see by his tribe tag, a demon. He was a member of the Burning Legion, but he converted. He isn't filled with the fell chaotic energy that demons have and that you wield as a thing, that green nasty energy that feeds on life and gives you, you know, a lot of rush of power at, uh, you know, the cost of life tap and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, because he met, uh, he ran into this group called the Army of the Light. Yeah, uh, with uh, Torellian oh. and uh, Illyria, yep. right? Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they, they, they were there. Uh, he's actually the one who recruited them into the Army of the Light. Oh, that's uh, crazy. Oh. Yeah. And so basically, when he was a member of the Legion, uh, he was charged with hunting down minions of the Void. So, you know, mm -hmm. they're like the Void Lord card and everything. So he was, because the Void is a threat to the Burning Legion as much as the Light is, um, mm -hmm. because the Void consumes everything. And so he kind of ran into some trouble on one of those missions. And then he was kind of rescued and purified, infused with the light. All the nasty, foul stuff was flushed out of him. 
And like he he and he remembers all the stuff that he did. And he's like, Yeah, I really regret all that. I was mm-hmm. not a good person back then and I want to atone for it. So he he is uh He's basically a dreadlord, you know, like like he's the same species of demon as Malganus is, but he fights for the light. A paladin, and, uh, him. paladin okay, demon. So, like when I first saw this card, I knew there was lore. Like yeah, it's so unique. Yeah. I mean, that's super cool. He also so my seems boy, very like, tall. <laughs> so so he's basically like like Vegeta. You know, what I'm saying he, he used to be bad, but he's a good guy now. Looks bad, but he's for the good side. I like that. Yeah, exactly. Very he's like, cool. He still he looks like you know the demon body and everything. He's got, but he's all golden and stuff. So, <laughs> real I, quick, I love when I love when odd paladins play this because then I just revive my taunts and it's game over. Continue, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> I I opened this card in golden, uh, and it's it's even more beautiful, like in gold. It's just, mm-hmm. the, it's like, uh, it's man, it's so cool. Yeah, I it, saw it was, that when you opened it because I considered crafting it in gold just ahead of time because I knew it looked good. I'm like, you know what? What if this card's a whiff? I'm not going to do it. And then it's like, you pop it open. I'm like, oh, I should have did it. <laughs> <laughs> just because it's going to be so shiny. Now Nate's got one and I don't have it. It's I very... actually got it as my free <laughs> one with the body. That voice. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> It uh, is quite shiny. Has one. <laughs> Jimmy has a Super Nintendo and a Sega Genesis. <laughs> oh my god, you guys. All right, all right. All right. The it. next one up I almost missed and I was like, "Hey Goliath, what do you think about this?" And uh this is this one's a little bit of a stretch, but uh we have a Scarlet Crusader here. Um who is but actually what? who is actually a vendor at the Dark Moon Fair, right? I mean, yes. I sincerely doubt that there's any lore, but uh... six years later, let's hear it. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, she's actually added just a couple of years ago uh, in the Legion expansion. They just decided to add her in there as a vendor. So they, here's the interesting thing. So the Scarlet Crusade, uh, I believe that I touched on them back in the Skull of Mance episode. Yeah. Um, you know, kind of radical group that uh, was corrupted by a dreadlord, uh, but they were very dedicated to completely wiping out all the undead and everything. They, did, they didn't know they were corrupted by a dreadlord. They think they're the good guys. Um, so basically, you can only talk, you can only get things from this vendor if you're wearing a Scarlet Crusade tabard. Um, oh, that's if you funny. try to talk to her without it, she'll say, you're the reason that the Scarlet Crusade fell, and I have to try to fundraise to get us going again by selling this stuff at the fair. Um, <laughs> if you have the tabard, <laughs> she'll sell you the stuff. And if you're a Forsaken, who, if you're playing an undead and wearing the tabard, she'll say that I'm disgusted with you. How dare you wear that tabard? Are a loving abomination, and then you basically say, "Look, you need money. Just shove it, and let me give you my money so I can buy <laughs> things." Like the the those three different options, the three different unique dialogues you can get from this vendor. That's pretty that's funny. Awesome. <laughs> wow, yeah, that's good stuff. Take my dark moon coins, you witch. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, I think that's pretty much it as far as characters and uh, cards from Dark Moon Fair. I swear, I thought there was something about the effigy, the uh, the Dark Moon statue. I thought so too, but I couldn't find anything. I swear, I read it at I... some point that they burned it on the last night of the fair or something like that. But then I couldn't find it again, and I couldn't find any screenshots either. And so I don't know. There, it there's some... like something they would put in, but. I haven't, seen, and the fair's not going on right now, so I can't live game. Yeah, find the mm. screenshots. So maybe it's there, but we don't think so right now. They could add it at some point. Who yeah. knows? And it's it's good additional flavor. Yes. Yeah. Well, one other thing that we wanted to touch on uh, that that Goliath and I noticed that that was pretty interesting was uh, now that there there is this. Um, when you hit level 50 on the rewards track, you get to choose a new uh, hero portrait. And there is one thing in common, 
with at least nine out of the 10 uh, <laughs> hero portraits. Uh, and that that is uh, that they all have armor from a very special set. Um, mm-hmm. The exception is the demon hunter. But uh, do can we talk about the demon hunter first? Sure. Yeah. So the thing, so all of the other sets, they all ha- are based off of an uh, special armor set that you'd get from the very first raid in Warcraft. But Demon Hunter wasn't a class back then. So instead, this is uh, what's it called? Demon's Bite. Is, is that is what it's it? Demon, I think it's Demon Bane. Demon Bane, or yeah, well, whatever it's called. I think yeah, I think that sounds right is a special armor set that you could get early on uh when demon first came out in the legion expansion uh in your basically through special quests and accomplishing various feats in your headquarters which was this really cool um uh basically demon spaceship that you stole from the burning Legion as your command center in order to fight against them um basically it's uh you could get this armor set and it's one of those things that if you get the different pieces like the more pieces you have of the set the stronger it becomes and that's something that all of these have in common they're uh well the others are what we call tier sets uh but this is about the closest thing that they could come to it for demon hunter since demon hunter is still new in the grand scheme of things and doesn't have all of those uh, past different armor sets they can draw on. But I think it's pretty fitting that they grabbed something that was basically one of the first powerful sets of armor you could get for the Demon Hunter class when it came out in the game. And they dressed a little in it. Yep. Well, and that's the other thing I noticed is that they matched uh, the name of all of these heroes. Like this yeah. one is Demon Bane Illidan. They mm-hmm. named it after the armor. And so they did that with the other nine heroes as well. And so when you look at the name of the armor, uh, it, it matches up with the name of the, uh, the, uh, the, sorry, the, the name of the, the new hero portrait matches up the name of the armor. Exactly. Uh, so first up, I have the Druid, um, which is, uh, let's see, I don't have the article pulled up in front of me, though. I should should probably get it here. But I, su- I suppose it's uh, Scenario and something or other. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, now not, not all of these armor sets are going to have any individual lore attached to them. Scenario has a where the Scenarian Circle is named after Scenarius. Uh, who was Malfurion's teacher and essentially the uh, nature demigod who taught druidism to mortal races in the first place, mainly night elves and Tauren, um, though other races eventually kind of joined it a little bit. But it's basically this faction-neutral circle of druids um, that work to, you know, help keep the balance of nature and all that stuff, and Malfurion is the head honcho of it and everything. So that's kind of uh, what that one is named after. But uh, that's probably the, the most direct lore that we're going to get out of any of these others. Uh, what they do all have in common is that they are from the first raid that I mentioned uh, in the history of Warcraft, which was called the Molten Core, which is where you fight a minion uh, that I'm sure all of you guys are familiar with, Legendary. Uh, he screams, die, insect, a lot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ragnaros was the very first uh, end, uh, end raid boss in, the, his, in Warcraft. And in the raid, as you're trying to get to him, then you would collect these tier sets, these various pieces that would give you powers uh, the more that you had. And so that was something that it was not only something that people really wanted because it was powerful, uh, but, you know, it was also you you had to get the rare drops. Even if you killed the right boss that dropped it, it wasn't at all guaranteed, especially back in the days of Classic, long before I played it, that you would ever actually get the drop. So if you had a full set of these things, that was a lot of prestige that you had. Like, I have the whole thing. This is the most powerful the game and i grinded all this out i had skills with my guild to be able to down these hard bosses enough for me to finally get the armor so that's why i think it's so cool that these are the skins that these Mm -hmm. characters have for 
getting to the very end, which mm -hmm. I might add. So you get this at level 50, correct? Correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the level cap back in Classic. So <laughs> you had to be level mm. 50 in order to go into the Molten Core raid and to fight Ragnaros and to collect all of this armor. So it just matches so perfectly, I think. And didn't you say you, you had the, the Felheart armor for your Warlock? I, or something I have like a couple of them, yes. Now you can just go into it because it's years old content. And so you can just go around and one shot every and so all by yourself. Um, and try to collect it for uh, transmog purposes, just for the sake of making your character look cool and dressing up. Nowhere near the same prestige. Like, no no level of prestige it has now is just cool-looking stuff uh, compared to what it was back then. But hey, some of always, it is really cool-looking stuff that you can dress your characters in. You can always play Classic. Yes, that, that is an option. <laughs> Although now the Classic servers have more beyond. Uh, the Molten Core, they're getting uh, close to the end. I think the next Ramus raid is coming out in that pretty soon. Yeah. So that is the armor stuff that will be the ultimate prestige for the rest of that server's existence, unless they decide to make new classic server where you're going through everything again. <laughs> I don't know if they'll do that or not, but if they did, then yeah, that would be the place where these particular armor sets would shine the most. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, very cool. Uh, I think that pretty much wraps it up for what <laughs> what what we have for our lore for this episode. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was super fun. I mean, I think we took something that is a re like relatively small Warcraft speaking, and they turned it into a full set here with lots of flavors. Yeah. So. More to be wild.